Welcome to Digital Asset News, the get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down into bite-sized pieces. Today, there is so much going on, we just got to get into it. So first up, FOMO and Fed Chair Powell's comments push Bitcoin price closer to all-time high. And this has been a pretty amazing 24 hours. And what he said, what Jerome Powell said yesterday is just par for the course and it's going to push us even higher. On top of Bitcoin blowing up, also the Ethereum price surges as December 1st launch date was announced for the Ethereum 2.0 and it was declared. And we're going to take a look at what's going on with that, plus a handy guide on how to become a validator with your 32 Ethereum. And finally, we'll round it all out from a question from Dr. Dave and he asks, hey, Rob, how can we buy Celsius? So we'll get into all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So, uh, I mean, hey, great day. This is what I've been talking about for the last 10 months in this channel, which was in 2017, when the parabolic bull run came, people lost their minds. And I kind of feel like the same thing is happening. We've got Bitcoin at 15.4, uh, Ethereum at 4.42, that's amazing. Uh, what else is going on? Whoa, XRP up to a quarter. And then we've got Bitcoin Cash at 255, Chainlink at 11, almost 12. I mean, everything is up and everything should be up because that's pretty much how 2017 uh, kind of led up to that parabolic. And I just have to make mention of this. All the money is made when things are boring and flat or people are scared and there's a dip. This is not a big, huge time to go, you know what, I'm all in because you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow we could just, people could just come back and go, hey, I'm gonna take some profits. And you and you, you have Bitcoin falling to 14 or 13 or whatever else it is. Ethereum could also fall down. Everything could fall tomorrow. So again, money isn't made when everything is going through the roof. It's made when it's boring and people don't wanna invest when it's dipping. And that's really what it comes down to. And this is a quote that I put out uh, yesterday on my Twitter account. And I just said, hey, look, you're probably thinking right now, man, I wish I had bought more. But you got to just, like I said right here, just relax. Uh, you bought what you could, when you could, and you're way ahead of a lot of other people out there. So in five years, whatever you've done before, I mean, if you're at zero, well, maybe you should start to buy something uh, and as far as cryptocurrency. That's what I'm doing. I'm not telling you what to do, but uh, you have probably bought what you could when you could. So just sit back and relax. It's going to be all right. All right. So everything's up in the market. I'm not going to go over that and beat it at horse. So let's just jump into our main story. So first up, if I had to vote uh, an MVP for Bitcoin, it's Jerome Powell. It's Jerome Powell and Michael Saylor. They are like the all-star team for Bitcoin Incorporated. One pulls people towards Bitcoin and one person is pushing people towards Bitcoin. And Jerome's doing all the pushing. So what's going on here? So this is a quick article. It's actually a kind of long article and talks about uh, the things that Jerome Powell said. And it kind of goes over everything that we've been talking about on this channel for the last three, four months or so. And it pretty much just says, look, this is what's going on with what is pushing Bitcoin to higher highs. Well, you got Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy, you got Square, everything going on with there. You got Fidelity Digital Assets, you got Paul Tudor Jones, you got everybody kind of FOMOing in right now into Bitcoin. And speaking of that, when I looked up this article on Crypto Globe, right next to it was this one called Bloomberg TV Anchor, now bullish on Bitcoin. It's amazing how price action does that. People don't really look at the fundamentals. They just go, wow, the price is up. I'm a believer. And Sure, you can do that, but as soon as things start to turn hairy, that's when people jump ship. And that's why me and you are here right now, and we're gonna always make great decisions because we know exactly where crypto is headed. We're not fair weathered friends. We know exactly what's gonna go on. So you know what? This anchor is gonna come in, and a bunch of other people are gonna come in like, this is awesome, I knew it the whole time. And then when it goes down south, they're like, well, maybe not, and they're gone. Great, we hands get out. Anyhow, so Jerome Powell is talking about more quantitative easing. Fantastic. We like to hear those words. QE, quantitative easing. Me, you, and all the gold bugs love to hear that. I didn't know this, but uh, several high-profile central banks, including the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of England, have announced drastic quantitative easing, or money printing, plans to combat the economic threat of COVID-19. Now, start talking about MicroStrategy and some other things, but this was interesting. Uh, the Fear and Greed Index. Total greed right now. And this is the downfall of a lot of investors. They start to think, you know what? It'll, it's going to go up. It's going to go up forever. It's not. And they're going to start dumping a bunch of money into it. 
good or bad, that's what's going to happen. And it's going to push the price or up, higher up. I don't know it's going to be a parabolic bull run, but there are fundamentals that we must always follow. And we must not let our emotions get into the fray. That is what I learned in 2017. So when I talk about dollar cost averaging, I'm still talking about it. As the price goes up, am I going to continue to dollar cost average? Yes, but not near as much because I'm going to wait for a pullback because it is coming. And then I will increase my dollar cost average percentages. But I will always keep buying, just not as much as I do during the dips and the lulls. So moving down, so let's talk about uh, the election day, which was Super Tuesday, and the projected results from various news organizations were all totally wrong. And Lindsey Bell, the chief investment strategist at Ally Invest, told CNBC, it looks like we'll see a split Congress, which based on history has been the preference of the stock market. So what does that mean? Well, the Democrats are going to run the U.S. House of Representatives and the Republicans are going to retain the Senate seats. So there's going to be gridlock. And then who knows who's going to be the president. So those guys are actually, those guys and gals are actually going to have to work together for once to actually get things done. But uh, if you're like me, I have no faith in Congress. I have no faith whatsoever. So I don't expect them to get anything done just like they haven't gotten anything done in the last four years. So let's get to the part of where Jerome Powell actually and what he said. And he states, the current economic downturn is the most severe in our lifetimes. It will take a while to get this back to the levels of economic activity and employment that prevailed at the beginning of this year. And it may take continued support from both monetary and fiscal policy to achieve that. Good luck with that, Congress. I just would say that I think we'll have a stronger recovery if we can just get at least some more fiscal support when it's appropriate. You know, when it's appropriate in the size Congress thinks is appropriate, which depending on who you're asking, Republicans say it's around uh, 1.8 trillion and the Democrats say it's about 2.2 trillion. So basically both uh, estimates are in the T or trillions. And what does that mean? That means you have to print a lot of money. And this is the most interesting part. If you want to get the economy back as quickly as possible to where we want it to be, then really it should be all of government working together. <laughs> yeah. Is monetary policy out of power or out of ammo? And the answer to that be no. I think we are strongly committed to using these powerful tools, quantitative easing, that we have to support the economy during this difficult time for as long as we needed, and no one should have any doubt about that. So there's two tools that the Federal Reserve has money printing and interest rates. Right now they're gonna keep the interest rates super low or at zero, and their next option and only option they have is negative interest rates. Depending on who you ask, that could actually be a reality, which would be scary for the traditional markets. Again, for us, bring it on. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section, but that's a bunch of good reasons why Bitcoin is going to push up now and in the future. I can't tell you what tomorrow is going to bring, but I can tell you that all this turmoil and all this indecision is going to lead to higher markets. Let's move on. Next up, Ethereum's price surges as December 1st launch date for Ethereum 2.0 declared. So in a new blog post, the foundation, Ethereum Foundation, offered insight on the launch of 2.0. And that sent it rocketing up, and that's why we see an Ethereum price of around $440. That's amazing. So this little recap, Ethereum 2.0, it's going to take at least a couple of years or so to really get going. But the first one, the phase zero, is for to move from proof of work to proof of stake. And of course, you're going to need 32 ETH to stake that and become a validator. The next part is to increase those transactions per second because they are so slow right now and they're super expensive. And you're going to see that in a little bit later. But that is when sharding comes into play and they're going to go from the, I don't know, I think 25 TPS or 30 TPS transaction per second to over 100,000. So can't wait for that. It's going to take a while to do. But once early validators send their ETH to the Genesis deposit contract, those assets cannot be withdrawn. They were talking about staking. The reward for sending one's ETH away for good is an annual percentage return on those assets. So if you want to stake it, you can make some good amount of money or maybe not. It all depends. Also in this latest update, the Ethereum team released the staking address at which validators can deposit their 32 ETH. So that is great. And I've been hearing this for a long time and I got it really excited. And actually a uh, guy from Coin Bureau actually put out a nice little tweet, which I totally stole from him. So thanks guy, I appreciate that. And I shared the exact same blog post, which was pretty interesting. So I'm gonna run through this real quick. I'm gonna link in the description. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why I am not going to be a validator. So this is from Ryan Sean Adams from Bankless Nation. He's got a, I think he's got a YouTube channel, uh, but he's a pretty smart guy, uh, really well written. So he states the staking contract is open, as we just talked about, and it's going to go live December 1st. Super exciting. And here's what this guide covers. It goes over a lot of stuff. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to glance over it. Hardware requirements. Here's what you need. 
You need a 64-bit Linux, Mac OS, X, or Windows. Here's the processor, memory, 8 gigabytes, storage, 100 gigabytes. Internet, and you need a power, which is an uninterruptible power supply. That's the recommended. And they've also got a minimum down here, which I don't think you should do. Choosing and installing your client. The launch of E2 features multiple clients, providing validators with the option of using different implementation. As of now, there are four, and you can choose them right here, and they give you a link. And going down, you got to... You have to install an ETH1 node. Running a validator on ETH2 requires you to run an ETH1 node in order to monitor for 32 ETH validator deposits. Interesting. Running an ETH2 validator is step four, or actually the fourth part. If you're new to Ethereum, then a major step is getting your fuel or gas to participate. ETH2 requires 32 ETH per validator, which verifies everything we've been talking about. This is the real thing. Recognize that if you end up becoming a validator, you're making a long-term commitment. Let me say it again. You're making a long-term commitment. We're talking years toward this initiative. So here's a step two. Head over to ETH2 Launchpad. Launchpad was designed for at-home validators. These are hobbyists who intend to run their own validator and are comfortable running commands in a terminal screen on their computer. So I'm just going to stop right there because for me, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I just got so many things to do and this isn't my thing. This could be your thing. This could really get you excited. And that's why I'm going to link in the description and you can read the rest. So again, I'm going to support Ethereum in my way by buying a boatload of Ethereum, which I actually been doing like the last three years. Later on, when they do a pool or something like that, I'll probably join. But uh, for me, this is a, a non-starter because I'm busy. Just being honest. So I'll link that in the description. You can check it out. And that is it for that section. All right. And this one is going to come down to something that I should have done a long time ago that I didn't. And I needed to complete this. This is from Dr. Dave at REM Sleep Doc. And um, we've been chatting back and forth about his issue with Celsius, which got resolved, which was fantastic. But he asked me yesterday, he says, hey, Rob, many of us may have missed this on your show, including me. So I tweeted, where do you buy Celsius if you're an American? And I go, you know what? I'm making that exact video. And the reason I made this video was because I wanted to put it in my new website, which should be ready by this weekend. It was supposed to be ready today, but I lost track of time and I just couldn't get some things done because I do other things. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to show you this video. This is going to show you how to use a MetaMask wallet or your Brave browser and connect it that way. Super simple. How to transfer Ethereum to that wallet and then how to buy Celsius. And also how to transfer when you buy it and put it in your Brave wallet or your MetaMask wallet, you can send it over to Celsius and actually uh, earn some good yield. So let's jump in and I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. Okay, so welcome. So this is one of those questions that I get uh, quite a bit, which is how can I buy the Celsius token? And uh, it's uh, kind of simple. Um, really, all we got to do is because we can't really find this on most any exchanges, we're going to have to use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap. And really, if you want to figure out exactly where to find uh, any kind of token or any kind of cryptocurrency digital asset, you can go to CoinGecko. That's CoinGecko, G-E-C-K-O dot com. And it's going to scroll down and find the one that you're looking for. And uh, for this specific situation, we're looking for the Celsius token. We're going to click on Celsius. And we're going to scroll down. Today it's at uh, 176, not a bad uh, day. Hopefully, as you watch this, you'll probably see it go up to, uh, to two, three, five, ten dollars. Who knows? And when we scroll down, we can see all the different exchanges that it's listed on. You can see uh, Liquid, Uniswap, and AAX. I don't know what Liquid or AAX is, so I'm not going to recommend them. However, I do know what Uniswap is, and I can tell you exactly how to do it, and it's exactly what I do, and I trust it. So on this on this channel or on this website, wherever you're watching it. Uh, I only give you the things that I trust and use. And these are the things that I do. So first thing we're going to need is something called the MetaMask wallet. And to make it super simple, I'm just going to recommend that you use Brave. If you don't use Brave browser, um, it's what I switched to about eight months ago or so, uh, because I used to use Google Chrome and it would crash. And there'd be different problems. Also, when I use Brave, it's much faster, it's much easier, uses less battery life. And here's the big thing. Uh, I can get paid for perusing the internets and the YouTubes and the Twitters and every place like that. Uh, I can get paid in basic attention token or BAT, uh, which is a cryptocurrency. So if you want to actually get paid for the things you do, why don't you just use 
uh, the Brave Rewards. And you can sign up for Brave. You can go right to Brave, uh, no big deal. But to make sure you're going to the correct site, so as we know, there's a lot of scammers out there. They want you to download different things. I'm going so if you're looking for this link, I'm gonna make it super simple. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in, it's in the description. If you're watching this on Dan Teaches Crypto, the website, I will link that also underneath this video. Now, as we know, there are a lot of scammers and hackers out there and they want you to download malicious software. So to make sure you're going to the right place, I'll just leave a link for you. Okay, so as you can see, I'm actually using Brave. So the first thing we need to set up is the MetaMask wallet, or we can just connect it to Brave. And that's why I recommend that you download Brave itself. So what I'm gonna do is over here on the top left-hand corner, thing called Brave, I'm gonna click on Brave, go to About Brave, and it's gonna open up all my different settings and preferences and things like that. I want you to go to Crypto Wallets right here. And it's gonna say, hey, you can attach a crypto wallet right to your browser, so it's super simple. This is exactly what I do when I'm going through the internet, it makes things a lot easier and just very simplified. So of course I'm gonna say, yes, I understand. They're gonna download the component itself. So here's our option. We can connect our Nano Ledger. If you have something like that, it's very simple. You just connect and then go through the steps. However, I wanna do this um, a little simplified and we're gonna create a new local wallet right here. So we're gonna click create and let's create a password, uh, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever you wanna do. So like we talked about in our section for Nano Ledger and how to uh, have that backup phrase, this is going to be your backup phrase for your MetaMask wallet or the wallet that is attached to this Brave browser on your local drive. So again, your cryptocurrency does not live anywhere. It does not live in your browser. It does not live on your Nano Ledger. Cryptocurrency digital assets exist on the blockchain in all those decentralized ledgers and nodes throughout the entire world. So these backup phrases, they only give you access if you lose something, if your computer crashes or whatever else, so you can actually spend things. If you haven't watched watched our series in the basics module or in the safety module, go check those out right now and it'll explain a lot more if you need to. So I'm gonna click here to reveal the words and I'm going to write these down in my stone book. If you don't have a stone book, it's uh, pretty simple. It's uh, tear resistant, smudge resistant, water resistant, and it keeps all my passwords in. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And again, never reveal your secret words to anybody. They are secret for a reason. So I'm gonna do that myself and I'm gonna cut this out of the video. And now, of course, it's going to ask us to confirm your secret backup phrase because they know people like to just bypass these things and just kind of like glance all over it. So, of course, we're going to do this right now and we're going to put those in. And great. I can I pass the test. So that's pretty much all you got to do. And you're going to click on all done. So here's what it is. You'll, this is your wallet and it'll always start off with zero Ethereum and zero basic attention token. Again, you can earn basic attention token just by perusing the uh, internet. You can get to this screen just by clicking on a new tab and it'll take you right to it. So it's pretty easy, turn on rewards. So what we need to do is to put Ethereum into this wallet on our Brave browser. So when we go to Uniswap, we'll have something to swap for our Celsius token. So we're gonna click on, there's two options here. We can buy it or send it. Well, we have nothing to send, so not, that's not gonna work. And we're gonna click on buy. And this one, you can't buy anything. It's gonna tell you, look, you need to deposit ether so you can interact with different parts of the web where you wanna you know, sell or use ether to buy things. So sure, we're gonna click on view account. So right here, this is our QR scanner. Now, if we have a phone app like uh, the Gemini Exchange or the Voyager app, we can directly scan this pretty easily and then send it over. Or if you don't have that, you can always just come over here double click this. This is your Ethereum public address, not your private address. This is your public address. I can post this anywhere and people can send me Ethereum all day long. We all can always post our public address anywhere we want to. Just don't post your private address anywhere. So to deposit Ethereum into this address, I'm going to show you two ways. One is with Gemini, uh, which is going to be on my browser. The other way is going to be through Voyager, which is through uh, my phone app. So first things first, I'm going to open up uh, my account in Gemini. I'm going to click on my portfolio in the upper left hand corner here. I'm going to scroll down to where I find Ether or Ethereum. I'm going to click on trade. And in the upper right hand corner, there's going to be three options, USD transfer account. I'm going to click on transfer. I'm going to withdraw from Gemini. So then this gets pretty basic. Uh, what's the currency? I'm going to click this down arrow here, a drop down box. I'm going to click on ETH or Ethereum, click continue. And it's going to say transfer to. This is the destination. So where do we want it to go? We'll go back to our wallets, 
click on the this is our Ethereum wallet address for the Brave browser or MetaMask. We're going to uh, copy that command C, control C or right click and then copy. Come back over here and we're going to paste it right in there. And don't worry if this isn't correct. Uh, if you miss a letter or something like that, like I'm going to take off the F. And you're going to see it says that's not the correct address. Now, the big thing here is that we want to make sure that if it is the right if it is the right address or a correct Ethereum address, we'll make sure it's the right one. So I always do is I take a look at the last four. E4, EF, I'm going to take a look over here. What's the last four? And only the last four. That doesn't show me there. I'm going to click out of here. And up here is the same thing. Uh, E4, EF. Okay, that is correct. So I'm going to make sure that's right. E4, EF, first one, zero X. Okay, great. Let's continue. Enter the amount, whatever it is. So here I'm gonna put in like 0.04, which really kind of sucks if you think about it. You're like, well, how much is 0.04? What I always do is I go here and type Ethereum to dollars. And it's always gonna give us a converter for the current price. So one ether is worth 439. Well, let's see, what have I got here? How about 0.04, 17 bucks, sure. Okay, I'll go with that. Click continue and here's the date, date November 6. Amount 0 0.04 from the primary to this address, which is our address right here. And yes, that looks good. So we're gonna request a withdrawal. And then they're gonna send me an authorization code to my phone because I don't want hackers to get in there and steal all my uh, cryptocurrency, which is a pretty good deal. I'm gonna put the number in and it's only temporary so I can let you see that. And then I'm gonna click submit. And there we go. You've transferred 0 0.04 ETH to blah, 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 blah. And then what we're gonna do is go back to our wallet and wait for it right here. Now, while we're waiting for that, which it will go through, I wanna show you the second option. So if I wanna transfer Ethereum from my wallet, I wanna use this nice little QR code, which I can find right here. For me, I'm gonna use Voyager. And I'm gonna jump into my phone real quick. I'm gonna click on Voyager right here. And I'm gonna to go to my Ethereum account in Voyager. I'm gonna click on transfer. And I'm going to withdraw ETH. So what I wanna do, let's check uh, the same amount. I wanna take 0.0 excuse me, 0 0.04. Up in the very top, it's uh, tap to paste Ethereum address, which I'm gonna do, but there's a little QR code icon right there. I'm gonna click on that. And then what do I do? Put it right next to my screen so it can absorb uh, the actual address. And then, oh, there it is. So very simple. I'm gonna slide to withdraw ETH. So after that, it's gonna say to check my email to confirm the withdrawal. Again, another check just to make sure it's me. I've opened up my email and it's gonna say confirm withdrawal. Notice that it says 0 0.05 ETH. That's because there is a fee to withdraw on Voyager. Kind of a bummer, but you always have to pay the pipe a little bit. So we're gonna confirm that withdrawal and then success. We know it's success because here's our 0 0.08 ETH. So I got already in like two minutes time, I got 0 0.04 from Gemini and also 0 0.04 from Voyager. So. Pretty quick, actually. All right, so that's the tough part. Let's go to the easy part. Easy part is Uniswap. So how do I get to Uniswap? Well, first of all, I wanna make sure that you go to the right place. Underneath this video, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description. If you're watching at Dan Teaches Crypto, it's right underneath this video. It's gonna take you to the Google spreadsheet. And I'm gonna look for Uniswap. So I'm just gonna scroll over to the right. Abra Uphold, Simple Swap, Uniswap. And here is the actual correct. Uh, link. Now, there's been people who have been posting to other links in different websites and it takes you to the wrong one and it steals your money. So just use this one. This is one that I use and it works. So I'm going to click on here. And if this is your first time, this is a new computer for me, it's going to say connect to a wall. Let's click on that. We're going to click on MetaMask. And it's going to initialize. And here it is. So remember, our MetaMask wallet is essentially the one that's attached to Brave. And again, 0 0.08 ETH. Here's our account. We're gonna click on next. And it's gonna allow this site to view the address of your permitted accounts, which is the one we just talked about. We're gonna click connect and let's connect it. And bam, there we go. So now every time you come back, like I'm gonna shut this down and come back. But every time you come back, it's going to view your wallet. And don't worry, it doesn't do anything. It can't send anything. It can't steal anything. You have to authorize these transactions. So real quick, I'm gonna close this down and then open it up again, just to show you that it'll always come back up. Let me go to the exchange. Let me click on that link one more time, just to make sure. And there we are. Now, if, if for some reason you clear out the cookies or something like that, where you close this down and you uh, do a hard reset, you just have to do the same exact procedure, which is just connect my wallet, click on MetaMask and bam, off you go. So we have 0 0.08 ETH to uh, play around with. What are we gonna buy? Let's buy a little Celsius. And this is the easy part. So from Ethereum, which is our wallet, we're gonna select a token. And what do we want? Well, we want Celsius. We could look for it. Or we can just type it in here, Celsius. And there it is, sell. So how much am I gonna do? Let's go about the max. 
set of 0 0.08, let's do 0 0.06. I wanna make sure that I have enough for the fees. I'm gonna click on swap. So the price is 250 Celsius per one Ethereum. Minimum's about that. Um, yeah, sure. Liquidity provider fee is almost nothing. So confirm swap. Crypto wallet notification is gonna pop up. And here's the gas fees. And of course, right now it is super high, 477. That is a lot in gas fees. And the reason for that is, of course, everybody's using Ethereum, everything's doing transaction because Ethereum 2.0 uh, was just announced today or yesterday. So people are putting everything in, in their Ethereum contract. And this is the problem with Ethereum. So if it gets like this, usually the gas fees are like 10 cents, 16 cents, 28 cents. Right now it's ridiculous. However, I want to get done with this video. So I'm going to click confirm and off it goes. So this is real interesting. So you can close it and that's fine. Or if you want to take a look at what's going on behind the scenes, this is the great thing about transparency. You can view everything on Etherscan. Now, unlike your bank account, you need to log into your bank account and it's attached to your name and everything else is through there. So you are just uh, privy to that. But for the blockchain, anybody can see anything in all different types of transactions. But here's the rub. They can only see wallet addresses. So they don't know who 0x47b blah, 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 blah is unless you tell them who it is. But you can see everything and where it all flows from. So here's the hash address. It looks like it was already successful. That's pretty uh, fantastic. This is from 0x47 or E4EF, which is our account right here, E4EF. And we got 0 0.06 Ether or $26. Here was the fee, ridiculous, 360. And after a minute or so, we come back here and here is our Celsius, all nice and fresh into our wallet. Now, what I usually do is I send this Celsius to my Celsius wallet. Before I get into that, I'm gonna tell you why I transfer over to Celsius. The reason is because with Celsius, I can earn on my cryptocurrency and digital assets. So uh, you can earn up to 21% annually. Uh, try doing that in any bank. So like some like an example, Tether's 13%, Bitcoin that you just parked there is 6% and 7% for Ethereum. And as I scroll down, I just wanna show you real quick, and this is from Celsius.network, you can check it out. Uh, you can see all the different um, prices for all the different cryptocurrencies. So uh, APY, 7% for Ethereum, Synthetics, 20, wow, 21%, 21% for Matic, Tether is 13, and then on and on and on. So that's why I transferred over. I think Celsius, they, they get like between five and 6%, so it's not a great amount, but it's better than nothing, just sitting around doing absolutely Zippo. But th uh, the way I do this is I go, I open up my Celsius wallet, and I click on Celsius, and I click on, little C in the bottom right hand corner here. I click on transfer and it's going to tell me only transfer same coin type as selected. Continue. I understand. I'm going to choose a coin. Make sure it's Celsius. I understand. There's two options, the, the QR code or the actual address. So I'm going to on my screen, I'm going to click on send Celsius. So it's going to ask for the public address. I'm going to make this very simple. I'm going to copy on my phone because I have my iPhone. Here's my iMac, which is uh, always uh, pretty simple. I'm just going to paste it right there. And there it is. I'm going to click the slow option. Actually, now I'm just going to click, click average dollar. Again, uh, the fees are greatly uh, inflated right now because of what's going on with the Ethereum network. Let's send over, I'm going to send over 10 Celsius. Click next and I'm going to confirm. And then it should be in the uh, wallet momentarily. So again, that's how you uh, buy Celsius. That's how you transfer Celsius and everything else. All right, so that's it. So uh, give me a couple couple more days or so just to iron out the wrinkles for the website and I'll put it all up there. But again, it's gonna be super easy. I boil everything down. It's easy to make things complex, but it's really hard to simplify things. But before we take off, I just wanna give a shout out to everybody who has signed up for Digital Asset News for the YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. So random shout outs, Michael Donath, Ron Drake, Eric Mitko, Ignacio Meya, David, 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 Frankster, <laughs> Frankster, Tom Cochran, Dubnet, who else? Kelly Church, TTP911, Donald Francisco, and Eron Rodriguez. So thanks everybody, I really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So uh, quite the week we had. I'll be glad when it's over. And uh, I hope you have a great weekend. So thanks so much. See you on the next one. Bop, bop.